Uh, my name is Stephen Lindridge. I chair the new Castle upon Tyne district and uh, it's my privilege to lead you through this act of worship today that's a culmination uh, of the five districts working together um, to bring you this uh, conference around safeguarding all of this last week and uh, I'm sure you've had probably lots of opportunity to dip into various things and gain some great insights from our wide range of wonderful speakers. Uh, and this act of worship is bringing all of that together uh, and coming before God as we want to hear what God wants to say to us into this very important subject of safeguarding. So we come and praise God this day and sing together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up.
I'm very grateful to the Reverend Richard Andrew, Chair of the Darlington District, who's going to lead our opening prayers. As we begin our day, give us your peace. As we pause to welcome your presence, give us your peace. As we do the work you have given us to do, give us your peace. For all places of need in this world, give us your peace. In trusting you, O oh God, to care for your children, give us your peace. As we seek wholeness, give us your peace. And Lord, as we reflect on your presence, let us be peace for others. Amen. One Peter, chapter four, verses seven to eleven. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind, so that you may pray. 
above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. A prayer before we hear the reflection from the Reverend Kerry Tankard, Chair of the Yorkshire West District. And I'm very grateful to Kerry for leading our thoughts and reflection around the passage set for us today. Loving God, you speak to us all in different ways. We thank you for your word that is endless and timeless. And we thank you for Kerry and his thoughts and preparation into this. We simply ask that your spirit would lead him and guide him and help us to hear you speak to us through this, your living word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I take from my text this morning words from the first letter of Peter. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Uh, I guess I'm not unique in being someone who enjoys giving and receiving gifts. I often confess to feeling more comfortable giving a gift than receiving one. Maybe it's just that joy that you receive when somehow you've managed to see into someone else's heart and mind and give them the thing that they most wanted. But before we get to the point of giving or receiving, I want to focus first on the truth that is not quite revealed in this first letter of Peter, but is part of the great story of the Bible. First, before anything else, you and I our gifts. The life I receive, the life that unfolds, it's only possible because before anything else, I'm a recipient of God's grace, God's perfect gift. I am a creation. I'm, a, I'm an act of God's giving and I'm unique and I bring something unique as a gift to creation. And I don't say that in a sort of egocentric way. I simply say it because it's true. I didn't summon up my life. I'm not the maker of my life. All life is, first and foremost, a gift of God's. And that's why every life must be handled with care. We receive life as a gift. And in receiving it, we're invited to care and tend it as we live it. And what underpins our theology of safeguarding is that life is God's gift and should be recognised as such. I bring an experience. I bring a story, a journey, all of which has been uniquely lived by me. And while it may be echoed in the experience of others, in their stories and their journeys, they will not be this, my unique offering. And that's why the gift of community is so important to us. It's the place where stories align and diverge and where people blend and reveal each other. In our baptisms, we're reminded that God has done so much for us before we could know anything of it. We're told in baptism of the special gift of God to each of us not only in our life, but also in the love of his son. And in baptism, we receive the gifts of life and grace and the possibility that everything can be transformed. God has chosen to gift us life. God has chosen to gift us grace. God has chosen to reveal us as part of his giving and therefore as gifts to each other. What then does it mean for us to be gifts? It means we need to learn 
how to receive what is given. The thing is, for a gift to be a gift, it needs to be given and received. It's in those two actions that gifts, they find their purposeful identity. When as a church we listened to the experience of women and men and how they had experienced abuse in the life of the church, we were preparing something the church needed to receive. The past cases review, the lives and tragedies that it represented was to become a gift to the church which we needed to receive in order to be changed. Often our consideration of gifts is as a good thing. The gift of love, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of community, empathy, place, confidence, resilience, togetherness, peace. All these things that we've been celebrated and visited this week in different ways. We recognise them all as goods. We know in a community that lives by the gift of love that people are enabled to flourish and be fruitful. They're given the space to wait healing and to heal, to be and be welcomed. And that's wonderful and it's to be celebrated. And in such a setting, we can begin to see the gifts that people are, what it is they bring and how they help create a liberty, a hope, a joy, a fellowship, a community. I think one of the things I've learned in the past 20 years of circuit ministry and in the church that emerges from the past cases review is that in it we received a gift that was fragile, painful and hard to hold, but holding it was what we needed to do. It was a gift we should hope would never ever have existed. But all those stories happened. All those lives were lived and are being lived. And we need to receive the gift of their testimony to change us, to improve us, to draw us to love more perfectly. We need to receive that gift, but receive it with care. We need to receive the gift with care. This is not the kind of gift that should be opened in a careless rush. Even the paper it comes in carries its own meanings. Every fold and crease of its wrap, every fold and crease of its wrapping needs to be considered, as do the one or ones who wrapped it. This is a gift that we are still taking time to receive and to understand. That's how carefully we need to receive it. Every page we turn and return and every story we hear and rehear and every life we consider, they must all be received with care. When we do that, we receive with care, we are changed and enabled. I know someone who is honest about her experience of domestic abuse. She doesn't want to be called a survivor or a victim or labelled by someone else's experience. But she is a gift to others, as through her talking to people, she enables them to then speak of their story and their life. She trains colleagues to understand how they might listen to someone who enters their organisation, but may not yet know how to speak of what it is they're experiencing. She's found colleagues after that training or even following her own openness who've then wanted to share something of their own story of what is happening hidden behind curtains and doors. This person is a gift. They receive her experience and then she in turn receives theirs. She receives them with care and she doesn't try and make them her own or her own story. She allows them to be who they are as she is who she is. These unique gifts sitting side by side. 
And finally, after seeing more of what are the gifts of this time, I want to return back to the sense of that grace that makes it all possible. It is an act of grace to be human. It is an act of grace to be a gift. It is an act of grace to receive what is given. It is an act of grace to receive it with care. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. By being those who speak and hear, we are faithful stewards of grace. By being those who receive with care, we are faithful stewards of grace. Therefore, let us be gifts. Let us receive each other as gifts with care and live the grace that is born in such relating. Amen. build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live a place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive built of hopes and dreams and visions rock of faith and vault of grace in the love of Christ shall end Let us build a house. 
house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen, serve and teach and live the word they've known hear the outcast and the stranger bear the image of God's face let us bring an end to fear and danger all are welcome all are welcome all are welcome in this place let us build a house where we all are named their songs and visions heard and loved and treasured taught and claimed as words within the word built of tears and cries and laughter prayers of faith and songs of grace let this house proclaim from floor to rafter all are welcome all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Very grateful to the Reverend Jill Newton, Chair of the Sheffield District, and the Reverend Leslie Newton, Chair of the Yorkshire North and East District, who are going to lead our prayers for others, our prayers of intercessions. Thank you, Jill and Leslie. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We bring now our prayers for peace in our lives and in our world. We pray for those who long for peace, for those whose lives are a picture of chaos, for those whose life and lifestyle rob them of inner tran tranquility, for those whose choices and decisions seem to close the door more firmly on the peace that could be theirs. May the grace of God touch them with his peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray for those whose whole life has been a journey seeking comfort, hope and peace. For those who long to fill the aching void deep inside. For those whose ability to find peace was damaged by those who robbed them of its joy in their youth. For those too afraid to reach out. And for those who find it so hard to trust again, now that this fragile gift has been broken. May the grace of God touch them with his peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. We pray for those who work for peace between nations, all playing their part in seeking global justice, hope and peace. For those who work to bring peace in human relationships, for counsellors, social workers and those ready to listen and care. For those whose concern for the well-being of others brings a pain and a sorrow, an anguish and a despair almost too great to bear. May the grace of God touch them with his peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. our prayer. We pray for those who have lost peace, for those whose homes have been wrecked by the storms of life, for those who have no one left of those who really mattered to them, for those whose home, family and friends are all gone, and for those who have a loneliness that is all too painfully real, and an aloneness that cannot be put into words. May the grace of God touch them with his peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. We pray for those who destroy peace, for those who see only the cause 
and give no thought to the pain, suffering and despair their self-centred blindness brings. For those whose claims to be fighting for justice are drowned out by the screams of their victims. For those who plant bombs to terrorise and intimidate others, and for those whose cruel indifference destroys all hope of the peace they claim they are fighting to bring. May the grace of God touch them with his peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are being robbed of peace, for those facing times of illness and uncertainty, for those who have taken their health and fitness for granted, and for those with endless visits to hospital for treatment still to come. For those robbed of peaceful sleep as their minds are a sea of turmoil, restlessness and despair. For those who carry a burden of worry for others. And for those who feel helpless except to listen, understand and care. May the grace of God touch them with his peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. We pray for those who long to be filled with the peace of God. For those for whom church, faith and prayer have been the touchstone for much of their lives. For those who deep down within themselves know they need something more. For those who long to be filled with the Spirit but are fearful as to what this might mean. For those who are daily discovering that peace is God's gift, the fruit that comes from his presence within. For those for whom this is the moment to open their lives and to welcome him in. May the grace of God touch them with his peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. Our prayer. We bring all our prayers in the name of the Prince of Peace, Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Thanks for being with us today and sharing in this act of worship to do with the safeguarding involved in all of the five districts. And my grateful thanks to all who have been part and put this together for this week of training and input. We draw this act of worship to a close with an ancient blessing from Augustine of Hippo. O Lord God, grant your peace to us, for you have supplied us with all things. The peace of rest the peace of the Sabbath, which has no evening, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So go in peace, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>